Hello everyone and welcome back to the Demystify Medicine channel. Today we're going to be talking about prone positioning. If this is your first time in this channel and you would be interested in more of these care educational content videos, then I really invite you to subscribe to this channel below and click the notification button to not miss out on anything. Before we start, I just wanted to give a brief overview of what topics we're going to cover during this video. We will go over what is prone positioning, for whom is prone positioning effective and how is it actually helping our patients, how patients should be placed in the prone position and the process, potential risks of prone positioning for ARDS and COVID-19 patients, and we're also going to compare the usage of prone positioning in first versus third world countries. The first thing I want to talk about here with you is to really go over what exactly is proning and why exactly is that we do it. Proning is just simply the process of taking patients with breathing difficulties and flipping them over onto their stomach into what we call the prone position. This simple technique may help patients with breathing just by changing their body position, and it may prove to help patients who are critically ill avoid being put on ventilators for breathing assistance. Prone positioning has been used since the 1970s in order to treat patients with hypoxia. It's when having low oxygen levels in the blood. But nowadays, prone positioning is being used to patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome ARDS and COVID-19. Both are a life-threatening condition that causes low blood oxygen levels. Flipping a patient on their stomach helps respiration because oxygenation, which is getting more oxygen into the blood, is easier in the prone position. It's a function of anatomy, as the human body has more lung tissue in the back of the body than in the front. The position allows for improvements of the following. Heart function and oxygen delivery to the body, expansion of the dorsal lung regions, respiratory clearance secretions, which may ultimately lead to advances in oxygenation, efficient gas exchange in the lungs, chest physiotherapy, which is an airway clearance technique to drain the lungs, alveolar ventilation, hemodynamics, which is the cardiovascular function, VQ matching, ventilation, which is the air to the lungs, perfusion, which is blood to the lungs. These will improve oxygenation and CO2 clearance. It will also reduce the need for ICU admissions for ARDS and COVID-19 positive patients, reduce risk for ventilator-induced lung injury, and finally, less lung compression. A study has shown that prone positioning benefits oxygenation and improves mortality in patients with ARDS. Another study suggested that prone position induces lung recruitment, decreases alveolar instability, and psychic alveolar recruitment and derecruitment. It's important as these forces can damage the already compromised alveoli. Prone positioning has been proved to be an effective treatment for the coronavirus condition, which causes abnormal fluids and secretion to pull toward the back. Where a person ends up with no more lung tissue, leads to greater interference with lung function, and quickly progresses as ARDS. A study published in JAMA Internal Medicine suggests that more than 40% of individuals in the study hospitalized for severe and critical COVID-19 developed ARDS, and over 50% of those diagnosed died from the disease. Now let's talk about the most important part of this video, how patients should be placed in the prone position and the process. It can be done either manually flipping them into the bed they're in, or it can be done with specialized beds such as the rotropom bed. Hospitalized patients typically lie on their backs, a position known as supine. In prone positioning, patients lie on their abdomen in a monitored setting. A team of trained clinicals include respiratory therapists, physical therapists or patient care technician, registered nurses, and anesthesia physicians are necessary to safely reposition a patient. The patient will go through a series of manual turns that are done in a synchronized pattern. The patient will be moved sideways, followed by turning the patient on their side, and finally onto their abdomen. Each position requires the patient's heart rate, blood pressure, and pulse oximetry, which is the oxygenation level, to remain stable during each move. The process takes time, patience, and skill to make sure that the patient remains stable. All patients placed in the prone position should be monitored carefully for worsening respiratory status and symptoms. Most hospitals maintain patients in a prone position for at least 12 hours per day. Though practices vary. Proning sessions continue until there is a sustained improvement in oxygen levels or if there is no improvement at all. Who is eligible for prone positioning? 
patients with severe ARDS who are being ventilated mechanically, patients of COVID-19 who are breathing spontaneously and not intubated, anyone who is not yet put on a ventilation machine or is already using one. However, prone should be avoided for patients breathing spontaneously that may require intubation. It's also not suitable for all patients, such as morbidly obese people, pregnant women, or those with facial injuries. Although there are some clear benefits with prone positioning, it's also important to consider the risks. One of the most important risks of prone positioning is the dislodgement of endotracheal tubes and intravenous lines. This typically occurs during the process of moving the patient into the prone position. In order to avoid this, it's important that the medical team moves the patient slowly and carefully and that they are ready to act quickly if anything is displaced or disconnected. Another risk to consider with prone positioning is the development of pressure injuries. Pressure injuries, also commonly known as bed sores, are sores that occur from lying in bed for a long period of time. To prevent this, Patients should receive proper cushioning under pressure points and should be reminded to alter their head and arm position every few hours. It's particularly important to remember this for ventilated patients who may not be able to adjust their position on their own. Additionally, it's important that patients are carefully monitored while in prone position to make sure there is no worsening of symptoms or any further complications. It's important to note that prone positioning makes it more difficult to perform CPR if needed, so it's important to ensure patients remain stable while proning. Prone positioning is not only prevalent in North America, but it's also well known in other countries across the world. Since prone positioning is very cost effective, it's relied upon by many developing nations that lack medical resources. During the early stages of COVID-19 in 2020, prone positioning was heavily relied upon by medical workers in Wuhan, China. As the rate of infection is increasing, the resources in Wuhan were severely strained which led to the need for a low-cost form of treatment that also reduces the need for labor-intensive care. One study published by the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine discusses how prone positioning helped relieve breathing problems that usually required ventilation. Even though prone positioning made an impact on a select few patients, it still allowed for the preservation of ventilation and life support resources for others in dire need. In order to better prove if prone positioning is effective, we had a small interview with Mr. Ambawi, a 69-year-old male patient who had to go through prone positioning. He had bilateral pneumonia and tested positive for COVID-19. We asked him questions such as what he felt in a prone position, if there was anything he did not like in proning, and if he thinks prone positioning is effective. To which he answered, he wasn't aware if he was breathing better, However, his need for supplemented oxygen via OptiFlow was steadily decreasing. He had a history of a diving accident at 23 years old, which left permanent damage to his neck and back. During initial sessions, it was difficult and it only got easier because he discovered how he should properly position his neck and body to reduce pain. However, his neck pain never stopped due to his neck injury. Mr. Habawi had to leave his arms in the swimmer's position. The hospital was well equipped with neck pillows and nurses who offered to help massage high pressure areas. Sometimes wire would disconnect due to movement, an OptiFlow machine would beep, and nurses would have to readjust. He asked the nurses to tape his wires on his skin, which left bruised marks throughout his body. The prone position very likely prevented the need for invasive mechanical ventilation. After his first session, his O2 requirements slightly decreased. This was a promising sign that oxygen levels in the lungs was increasing. This was all for this video. We hope that you are able to have a better understanding about the prone position. Check out the references below to read more about the research being done on prone positioning. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out this page for more informational videos.